Three years ago, a Kickstarter was listed for a game called Enchanted Portals, a co-op run-and-gun platformer that was the most aggressive Cuphead ripoff the world had ever seen. Not only did it copy the art style, mimic the music, and outright steal the majority of its gameplay, but it was also asking for a staggering $127,966 to be crowdfunded. And that goal, as you may have guessed, it failed to reach by a pretty large margin. Yeah, it turns out that the world doesn't get too excited when a company comes out of nowhere and tries to make hundreds of thousands of dollars stealing from another game. Guess you learn something new every day. Seeing just how badly this Kickstarter failed, I thought that the dream was dead, and that I would sadly never be able to play another Cuphead-like game. I was kind of bummed. I mean, sure, this game was so close to Cuphead that it could be considered identity theft in most states, but I really love Cuphead, so anything like it would be a W in my book. Then, one day, in the middle of the night, while scrolling through my Steam store looking for something, anything to play, there it was in its pristine glory, rocking the same exact clip art low effort logo it had all those years ago. There are two notable things that I immediately picked up on when looking at this game's Steam page. Number one, this game costs as much as Cuphead which is a pretty ballsy move. And number two, the game reviews are mostly negative. Here's some of my favorites. From the producers who saw Cuphead, feels like a... <laughs> feels like a lobotomy. Probably the worst game I have ever played. And my personal favorite, this game sucks so much, oh my god, this game controls like, like a drunk uncle trying to walk in a straight line. Why is this game the same price as Cuphead? Buy Cuphead instead. Hashtag suck my nuts. Bravo. <laughs> Bravo. Bravo. So how bad is Enchanted Portals actually? And more importantly, can I beat this game under two hours in order to get a refund on Steam? Well, we're about to find out. After a quick word from today's sponsor. Oh my god. Scooch, is that you? Oh, shoot man, what's up? We haven't seen you in months. We have an entire search party looking for you, that's why I'm here. Yeah, I just kind of realized that society is exhausting. So I came out here and have been playing on my OnePlus 11. So let me get this straight. You decided that being a human being was too hard, so you moved into the woods with nobody else and have just been playing games on your phone for three months? Yeah, kind of. I mean, this thing has a Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, so I could play any mobile game with pristine graphics if I want to. But it also has 16 gigabytes of RAM, so I could listen to music, read books, watch videos, or just have 44 other apps open in the background. Yeah, but your battery is bound to die eventually. Well, with the long battery life and battery health engine that helps to extend the battery's life and keep the high charging speed, it doesn't really die that much. But it does die. And then what do you do? Believe it or not, <laughs> there's an outlet right there. That's kind of weird. Yeah, weird, right? So you ghosted everyone in your life, moved into the middle of the woods, and not once did you think about contacting anyone? I just couldn't really find a way to do that. That's a phone. You're holding a phone. Oh my god. You're right. This is a phone. Well, I guess I better get going, huh? Empty-handed, back to society with my stressful life. You want your own OnePlus 11 so that you can move in the woods with me, don't you? Oh my god, yes please, I want one so bad. The game starts off with two of the most generic protagonists I have ever seen being sucked into a book after doing some dark magic. The first stage is this cursed woods level where I get a feel for the controls. And believe it or not, this game controls exactly like Cup. Head. The jump button is the same, the dash button is the same, the shoot button is the same, hell, even that awkward lock yourself in place so that you could aim button is the same. But there are a few minor differences. Instead of having a parry, you have this weird shield thingy that makes you immune to damage for about a second. 
Also, the dash is just awful. So when you dash in this game, it's not like Cuphead. You keep your momentum when you dash. You always have all three weapons available and they're selectable via using the D-pad. And this is something that I don't really like. I think choosing your loadout in Cuphead really changed the game up. The reason for it is that there are these enemies that glow a certain color and they only take damage from the weapon that corresponds to the color. It may sound like a cool mechanic, but they never freaking use it. Besides this first section, I think we only saw the mechanic like two times in the whole game. There's also a melee attack that you have to use to break down a branch, but spoiler alert, I only pressed this button twice in my whole playthrough. Oh my, oh my goodness. Okay, got it. The devs of this game did not think anybody would ever play like this, so they thought the right way to make the video game was to let enemies spawn infinitely and if the player doesn't deal with them, they're f***ed. Got it. Okay, cool. We head right and clear the first section and here's where we learn another fundamental difference between this game and Cuphead. A difference that I also despise and that is a lack of an overworld. It's just a running stage into a running stage into a boss fight all separated by PowerPoint slides, which is kind of disappointing, but I'm just impressed that this game is alive at all. I don't need need you to win a gold medal, alright buddy? I'm, I'm just surprised you're breathing. The second stage is where this game starts to show what it really is. The absolute bare minimum. Like sure the background looks good, but it loops a lot with one minor change here and there. And speaking of looping, the background music doesn't even loop correctly. It just awkwardly stops and then starts back up with no crossfade or anything. Is that uh, a bad loop? <laughs> Did the music loop <laughs> poorly? So you heard the music stop for a second? Like they used to do on the Nintendo? I play old games for fun, and this rarely even happens on the Super Nintendo. <laughs> we hit our first boss, and this is the moment I knew would make or break the game. The moment that would define the difference between this game being a 2 out of 10, or a staggering 4. I love that there's no animation for them taking damage. I think it's cool that they just like kind of glow white, but to just keep doing what the hell they were doing. And she also uh, doesn't come to this side at all, right? I don't know why, she just never makes it over here. Instead of them animating the bosses turning into their next phase, they do this. Oh shit. She's doing a, a scene change, which is already kind of janky, but look at what happens at the end of this boss fight. My cabeza, I got hit twice. There's not even a death animation, huh? Huh? What? But she was right there. Hold on, hold on, wait, hold on, play, hold on. <laughs> what was she doing? The entire first world took me about 18 minutes, meaning I was making some decent time if I wanted to hit refund percent. And with the first world out of the way, it was finally time for world two. Aliens, I guess. This level is a lot worse than the first one, somehow. Not only did they do almost nothing to spice up the gameplay, but believe it or not, there are no sound effects at all other than my own. Like, at all. And I don't want to spoil too much, but it's like this for the rest of the game. Also, another weird thing, the main character in this game is insanely tanky. I couldn't block that, like my, my thing was still on CD. To the point that you could almost face tank the majority of the stage and rely on health pickups to get you to the end. I want to say it was a conscious choice made by the devs because they probably picked up the controller for three seconds and realized what they've done. The next section is cyber themed where you get chased by alien police and COVID? I guess. Oh, I get it because it's a virus and we're inside of a computer. <laughs> Look at this guy. <laughs> He's a Trojan. <laughs> and before you ask, no, none of these enemies have sound effects either. We get to our next PowerPoint slide and face this world's boss, a cow with, you guessed it, 
no sound effects. His second phase, he does do a little dance number where you lose control of your character and have to not stand on falling blocks. Then there's another slideshow transition into the final phase, which is a flying section that I want to enjoy. But the attacks are just so awkward. The sound is still missing and your hitbox is massive. Still, we beat the Robo Cow on our first try and get to World 3 in only 31 minutes. You wanna guess what the next section is? Jungle World. Monkeys are getting launched, doing the hear no evil, speak no evil, see no evil, crocodile platforms that sometimes leap at you, and of course, disease carrying mosquitoes. Besides that, this stage is very straightforward. The next section is a temple full of booby traps, but it's so painfully generic that I don't have anything to say about it. I did learn a cool movement option though. I just learned something that is so overpowered. If you dodge, you get a third jump. So if you jump, if you jump, jump, dodge, it resets your double jump. And now it's time for the boss of Worlds 3. Okay, don't really know uh, the spot they want me to stand, but all of these bosses have had like that one spot that you're just like safe in. Phase one ends when the crab boss accidentally fucking shoots himself, which is kind of dark. Phase two, we fight an octopus underwater, which is kind of cute because you turn into a mermaid. And then phase three, you fight the soul of phase one again. I'm guessing it's because editing the first one is a lot easier than designing an entirely new boss. And then when you beat him, you see his soul in the background on fire. Like, is his soul dead? Did he get sent to double hell? What's going on here? We get to world four with 40 minutes of in-game time out of our two hour limit. And a fun little fact here is that this game also has no save files. So you have to beat the game in one sitting or you start all over. <laughs> I didn't know that while playing this. I just read it in some of the Steam reviews after, and that's just so insane. World 4 is a creepy castle, not to be confused with a creepy house from earlier. They bring back the color coding mechanic from stage one here, which sucks because changing your weapon is very slow and can't be done mid-air. There's also moments like this where multiple tanky enemies come at you at once and you can't kill them before they reach you because you have to keep swapping. Besides that though, this level is as nothing as the rest of them. Still no sound effects, enemies only have one animation and looping backgrounds galore. We enter a cave system for section two of the stage, and at this point, I understand why the devs didn't want to allow save files. Because at this point, I was exhausted. The game is so generically bad that I can't imagine anyone getting to the end on their first try. It felt like putting sandpaper on my bare brain, forcing me to listen to my sound effects over and over alongside these two minute sound loops. It felt like an eternity, even though it was only 51 minutes. I, I knew I couldn't stop there. That Steam refund was very quickly falling out of my grasp, so I had to do my best. The boss here is a princess that kisses frogs, but the most notable thing about her are these guys up here that drop potions on my head. Why are they so important, you ask? Because they're not actually holding the potion. It is just a PNG of a potion attached to their character. I, I can't make this up. <laughs> but at least this boss has an animation when she transforms into her frog self. After some very basic fighting and a slideshow transition, we beat phase two and have to shoot her face when it pops out of the water in phase three. It, it's exactly like the crab from earlier. It feels like the team was trying to save money on making a whole new boss. We finally defeat her and she drowns, I guess. Then we hit world five with 55 minutes of in-game time, giving us one hour and five minutes left to beat this game. But then we hit a brick wall. This boss was by far 
the hardest boss in the entire game. He shot more projectiles at all times, he had birds bird. flying in at random, and he had this little cowboy at the bottom following me to shoot me in my ass. And all of that would be excusable and not too hard to manage except for one massive thing. He is the tankiest mutant I have ever experienced. I counted and you have to shoot this man for three straight minutes in order to win. Three minutes where enemies spawn randomly, you're being shot at by four people and this guy is following you around like he's trying to sell you a used car. Holy. Oh my god, that's terrible. I took damage there because my hands are getting sweaty from dodging for eight hours at a time, please! Like, naturally, the mechanics aren't too hard on paper. It's the health that's an issue because there's no indication that you're getting anywhere. None of the enemies in this game have a damage animation. They just glow white. And I mean, sure, this guy transforms into his second phase, but besides that, you have to wait around and dodge the exact same way for 180 seconds. He takes so long to beat that sometimes the music loops twice. <laughs> And it snake charms you into making a mistake and failing again and again and again. I also learned that you do have a super in this game, but it just makes your bullets look a little bit bigger. And that's especially depressing because on the Kickstarter page, three years ago, there is clearly a video of a super being used. Like, it has an animation and everything, but I guess they just scrapped it last minute? This boss alone took me 32 minutes and 40 seconds, which is longer than any of the two previous worlds combined. And now we were left with 35 minutes to beat the game in order to get our refund. The next segment is Mobster New York, where there's a bunch of chickens shooting eggs and bouncing pizzas and whatever else this fever dream of a game wants to throw at you. But I hurriedly smashed through it on my first try. We then fight this weird chicken Elvis Presley, who felt kinda hard at first, but then I realized that the enemy on the left can't shoot you if you're in the corner. Finding the safe spot is a reoccurring theme in almost every single boss fight in this game. After a weird, uh, nut blast? We get to phase two where he becomes a Roman warrior. Because this is the fountain of time? I don't know. I'm tired. I stand in the same spot and do the exact same thing, and then we get to his third phase where he becomes a caveman, which just makes dinosaurs tackle you from the side while he clubs you if you go to the center. We make short work of Elbert Bresley, and now it was time to face the final bosses in World 6 with only 25 minutes left. The first boss is Cartoon Mozart, and easily the coolest boss that this game has to offer. He hits his piano keys which actually make noise to the music and send shockwaves on the ground. It is so sick and head and shoulders above everything else. Too bad it's only 30 seconds long. I'm not kidding, the game finally did something good and then went, wait, that's not our style, and then canceled itself. The next boss is Cerberus, but you want to know something interesting about this one? This boss has a fully animated intro, which no other boss does. The reason for it is because three years ago when they released that Kickstarter trailer, they showed this animated intro to make the game look good. And in that animated intro from three years ago, they actually had music change and go with the mood of the scene. But now, three years later, the background music is just repeating royalty-free garbage like the rest of the game. Also, this boss sucks. He has three different attacks, but most of them don't hit you if you just stand on the left side of the screen. And he also takes uh, about 30 seconds. And then we hit the final, final boss. The book we've been chasing all along. And I'm just gonna freeze frame here so that you guys can get a grasp on what's happening. That's the Utter from the Cow Boss, the Cat from the Witch Boss, the Princess Frog, and of course he has that stupid color coding mechanic that makes you switch weapons. I lost my first attempt because that's just 
a lot to take in. And honestly, this boss looked like it was gonna be impossible. But then I remembered the game I was playing and stood in the bottom left corner so nothing could hit me. His second phase is just a tree that shakes out a bunch of nuts and squirrels that explode? Yeah? And then the book turns into a giant blonde boy who honestly beat my ass. All right, our time limit was starting to run out. And now, failure was no longer an option. I get to the blonde demon book boy ready to change my approach. And I realize that if I just double jump, dash, and jump again, I can nearly avoid all the damage. And even though he gets me to my last hit of health, I come out on top. The final cutscene is the protagonist getting back home and returning the book before their dad notices. But then the book runs away and tells it's dead. <laughs> And then the game hits us with a Finn question mark? <laughs> what the f*** do you mean, Finn? Don't you dare think about making a sequel when this one is so undercooked. Like, my, my god, I'm, I'm so insulted by this. And now for the moment of truth. Was I good enough to get a Steam refund on the worst game I've played in years? Wait, 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 a minute and 18! A minute and 18! I can get the refund! Now, some of you may be thinking, Scooch, isn't it mean to refund a game just because you could beat it in under two hours? And to that, I reply, yeah. Yeah, it is. Thanks for watching.